All right, guys, Jameson and Alex here. Today we're going to be talking about the GM Warlock. You heard me. <laughs> yeah. This is from Velda's Spider yeah. of Secrets. And uh, yeah, your patron your pa- is the your GM. Pa- your patron is the GM. So if you're all about that meta, meta, meta life. <laughs> meta, meta, meta. That's <laughs> the <laughs> Boom. Uh, if you're new to the channel, sorry, that was one of the weirdest intros I think we've ever done. If you're new to the channel... Or to the subclass what series. Is here? Uh, we're going to go through all oh, the abilities gained in the subclass, and we're going to rate it based on its roleplay value, combat value, and overall class synergy. All three of them. Based on how the abilities gained in the subclass improve on the base <laughs> class abilities. Here, our giveaway for D&D Beyond Players Ooh. Bundle. Make sure you like, right. comment, and subscribe to be entered in that. And of course, thank you to our sponsors, Hit Point Press. Make sure you check out the latest and greatest coming from them. Which I will have on screen here. It's a wide variety of stuff. They got humble really bundles. Is. They got big bad stuff. They got animated spell cards they got plushies and pins they got all kinds of awesome high quality yep. stuff so make sure you check them out all right all that being said alex what do you get as a gm warlock all right C- you might want to cover your ears here to how we're asked how i start this because i know this is a sore subject for you the animatic gm lets you choose from an expanded spell list when you learn a warlock spell the following spells are added to the warlock spell list for you Take magic, identify, augury, locate object, clairvoyance, remove curse, divination, locate creature, commune, and legend lore. So you get to, you, you have more spells to choose from. To choose from. It's a sore subject with me. <laughs> I, I just, Warlocks are so weird. That Yes. They're like, so weird. Just, just, they have so few spell slots anyway. Just let them have, just just let, just let them have let, some let, extra spells. Let them have like, you know, a couple of them a day. Anyway. Play, we, your first ability is player character, which is... What you are. So be yourself, I guess, is what it's telling you to do. Be yourself. You have grasped the most profound secret that you are merely under the control of a far distant player, making you, a player character, one of the GM's favorite playthings. Yeah. I know, I, I know, what, no, I know what that feels like. <laughs> you have advantage on persuasion checks and deception checks that you make to interact with friendly humanoids. However, you only gain this benefit while doing so would advance the plot in a way the GM feels is appropriate. That sentence there is one of the strangest sentences I've ever read in the subclass. <laughs> this is why I picked it. No. <laughs> I wanted to watch him squirm. It's so <laughs> this it's, whole, this like, whole video. You get a bonus if the DM lets you. Yep. And that's kind of the theme of the entire it's, Yep, That's what so we're dealing moving with. Moving on, we have at level six, fudge the roll. By level 6, your player has gotten a taste of success and wants to look as impressive as possible while achieving it. Consequently, they might occasionally fudge a cosmic die roll in your favor. When you make an attack roll, ability check, or saving throw, you can nudge the d20 slightly, changing the number to one of the three sides adjacent to the top I love side. the way that's worded. It is. It's, it's so g- weird and unique. It's so great. Alternatively, you can re-roll the die. You must use the new result if you do so. Yep. Once you use this ability, you can't do so again until you finish your short or long rest. However, you can push your luck and attempt to use it additional times between rests. Doing so might evoke the GM's wrath, however, and cause unpredictable negative side effects decided by the GM. So, uh... It's kind of like Wild Magic Sorcerer. Yes. You tip... To, you want to go back to do your... You regain your advantage roll again. You have to roll on the table. Yes. It's kind of like that. But you have... There's no predetermined outcome of chance right. based on what's the table. It's, it's like... It's so on. awkward because it's like, you can only do it once per short rest... Unless you want to do it more. <laughs> yeah. like, and the DM lets you. Yes. So, sure. You always know that I will let you do as many times as you want. Yes. <laughs> because you will feel the punishment for doing so. <laughs> the cost will be great. <laughs> At level 10, we have plot armor. You've learned that the universe follows an overarching plot, and your role in the plot is critical. As such, the GM conspires to keep you and your allies alive because otherwise, where would their story go? You finish a short or long rest. You and each of your allies that rested with you gains temp HP equal to your warlock level plus your charisma modifier. That's pretty solid. Yeah. Get a whole party like 15, 10 mm-hmm. HP. A- any rest. At level 10, yeah. yeah. So start of every day, you do a long rest, get the temp HP. Every short rest, get that temp HP. And we all know preventing damage is much better than, than trying to... Especially when you're a warlock and you get... That many spell slots a day. <laughs> or short rest. But anyway. And then lastly, OP class feature. <laughs> <laughs> this is so God, great. I love this. This is so great. 
Oh, this is the Abed of subclasses. All right. Oh, what a reference. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, that's good. I did not think about that. You would start up enough Great. cash with the GM to use abilities other players' characters would be punished for employing. <laughs> you can use your bonus action to break the balance of the game. For the next minute, you roll advantage on all attack rolls, ability checks, and saving throws. For this duration, you roll three D20s. And Super advantage. And take the highest number rolled for advantage instead of two as normal. Once you use this ability, you can't use it again until you finish a long rest. So yeah, you definitely break the balance of the game for a minute. <laughs> uh, You're a, really bad luck proof that for a is, minute. <laughs> uh, so interesting. So you're just going to be hitting every single Eldritch Blast, basically, because you have no spell slots, right? <laughs> <laughs> you, blow your, you blow your couple spell slots, and then you're just hitting every single Eldritch Blast for the next minute. And, and all them saving throws. Yeah, and, and all sure, them saving sure, throws. But uh, yeah, that's it. Those are I, the abilities. I, I pray for the day that somebody does this and rolls trip natural ones. Oh, that would be... Because that point you just go down just, just legend. Shut the laptop or take take your character just sheet and just that. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> it's like I, I, I'm I'm retired. <laughs> but those are all the abilities. So we'll move on into the rating portion of the video. Oh. First up is the roleplay value asterisk, as always. Talking about roleplay value, we're talking about interacting with the world around you, interacting with NPCs, non-combat scenarios, avoiding combat, basically things outside of the initiative order. Not talking about your class fantasy, history, lore, background that's on you as a player. Can't rate you, but we can rate the abilities gained in the subclass, right. how they might improve your potential in those roleplay scenarios. I, I've had this just super awful, like, dorky, cheeky grin slash chuckle going on this entire video because of the shenanigans that is this subclass. Oh, Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So, I was watching him and, read it, just going like, "What is this?" You just seen me when I read it the first time. I was like, "Wait, what?" He let he let me pick which one of the ones we did for each one the first time. So this is his fault. Yes. So Alex, to thank for this one, but uh, here just so you can get a taste of my my feelings for Warlock, I will read you word for word the first bullet point on my notes for roleplay value, which is. Spell list is great, but you're a warlock. <laughs> so uh, my point with that is that it's the spell list is great for yeah. RP. It's, but it's 10 you, RP spells. But you have to choose them for your spell list. You yep. don't get them for free. Mm -hmm. So are you going to go out of your way to pick those spells? Nope. Probably not. Maybe. I mean, if you're really going to try to roll uh, into the whole meta fourth wall breaking thing on here i mean legend lore definitely fits into that uh, Audrey, Divinance, they're, I mean, they're yeah. all locate creature locate object yeah, with the exception of remove curse like the rest of them are literally all like gather information you probably wouldn't know shouldn't right. know otherwise exactly so i mean <laughs> sure why not you're getting access to some strange spells that warlocks otherwise wouldn't have access to okay whatever if you really want to play into it uh that being said interesting to get persuasion and deception bonuses only uh, when the GM feels appropriate. Yeah, right. So that is where it gets weird because it's like, with me, I tend to run run my own campaigns and follow adventure books and yep. stuff. So I can make things become important <laughs> to the plot. If you're following an adventure book, sometimes you kind of have to follow the story. Yep. If you're trying to really stick with the original outcome of the book. So depending on how your DM runs stuff or GM runs stuff, sure, um, definitely could be nice on there. The fudge roll is unique, unique and interesting to be able to see like the sides. Which, okay, who would have? Who thinks of this kind of stuff? Uh, yeah, again, it's interesting. A huge, hugest of kudos right. to the concept of like nudging the die, and it's like whatever other sides are visible besides the top, that's fun. And it like is that. once for short rest, which isn't too bad because you're no. a warlock, so you're kind of dependent on short rests anyway. You're going to yep. be begging your party to take short rests all the time. Yes. So you're it, like, it man, I need you. a nap, man. So uh, nap with time. that, you're really, every time you roll, you're basically getting four numbers because you're picking, you have the number you actually rolled and then the three around yep. the side too. So definitely uh, can come into handy play for yep. It's like, oh, that's six becomes a... 17 all of a sudden i i don't know what numbers are next to them like, <laughs> yes uh, i don't know when uh I never really what paid is it that much attention i cost a hadron is that right that i'm not sure no dodecahedron's 12 yeah it's not that, that, <laughs> I, I think it's i cost a hadron 
We'll go with that. I think it is. Let Tell me where I'm wrong. Let us know. <laughs> burn, I, burn it. Burn it down. Down below in the comments. I want to read the how it be in fire. geometry and how many uh, And then the capstone is 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 niche, but super powerful when it yes. comes into play. And one of the things I like to say too with temp HP uh, is it can help in RP. Mm -hmm. And the reason I say that is because it helps a lot in exploration. Yes. If you're running into hazards, traps, things like that in the environment for exploration. Yep. Uh, it's nice to have that buffer to not have to dip into your party resources. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of one of those indirect things that can help you in the exploration side of RP. Yeah. That being said, we gave it a four out of five mm -hmm. in the role play department. Yep. But you are a warlock. But you are a warlock. On the combat side of things, this is very difficult to put an accurate score to with most things because it's so it's such relies on your relationship to the GM and how much you want to be entangled together in the way this thing is designed. Absolutely. Um, we get fudge the role at letting you essentially adjust your role. And it's not exactly advantage. Of course, it says you can re-roll the new die, but you have, you have, must take the new results. It's not That's not true advantage. It's a re-roll. Right. Uh, but the other one is you can essentially kind of this modified advantage because you get, you know, access to 20% of the die when you roll a die every time right. until you choose to, to pop the thing. So that's... Nifty, especially if you use it for attack roll or saving throw. And again, when I when I have one off abilities like that, I tend to lean towards using them for a saving throw. Right. Unless I'm throwing out like my most powerful spell. Of course, when you're a warlock, everything is your most powerful spell all the time. So that's weird. But it's like you know, I, I would prefer to save that probably for making sure I stay alive over like capping out my sure. make sure I hit with my damaging spell. That's just that's fair. Personal, that's fair. personal preference. That's all. Now, if you're you know. Sorcerer or wizard, and you're dropping a level nine spell, you make sure that sucker hits, it'd be different. Yeah. Um, the plot armor thing, like I said, giving you bonus temp HP obviously helps you in combat, and yep. also the fact that it's not just you, that everybody gets the temp HP. Everybody likes that. It's and, and it does scale up, you know, it's with your warlock level plus your charisma modifier, so there's a floor there, obviously. I mean, so it's going to cap off at, you know, if you go all the way to 20, it could be as high as 25 temp HP. Barring any crazy magic items that boost that. That's correct. Up. Also correct. Um, but that's so if 25, if you've got a party of four people, that's 100 temp HP given out every rest, not just, you know, once a day. It's yeah. just, it says every rest. So that's it's pretty fun. Yeah. Sure. Uh, and then, of course, your OP class feature is ex exactly what it is. It This feels like if a paladin were making their own capstone ability, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sure. this is what they might come up with because it's just. I'm going to I'm going to need like 17 d20 so I can just throw them like a shotgun at the table. Yes, and that's what <laughs> this comes exactly. up to be. So you're you're just playing around with extra dice and re rolls and a bunch of you know messing with the die over and over again, but it creates a lot of useful effects in your combat. So we went with a three and a half out of a possible five. Yeah, uh, it's it's again you're really just screwing around with the luck a lot. Yes. But you're, again, it feels like the entire subclass mechanically is built around really just bad luck proofing what you want to do as a warlock. Right. <laughs> so I think the biggest issue for me with this one is you're already very dependent on short rests as a warlock. And this mm -hmm. just ties all of your abilities to short rest or long rest as well. Yes. So now you really, really, really need short rests. If you don't have them, you don't have a subclass. Right. <laughs> so mm -hmm. uh, that is... My big issue with that. Yes. And that actually comes into play on the synergy side as well. So moving yep. into synergy rating, uh, with Warlocks, I mean, your main things are you're going to be your invocations. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, sometimes your packs can come into play. Yep. The spell list, of course. Yep. The problem with Warlocks, your spells are very limited. Yep. So even when you do buff or impact spells, it only goes so far. Because yep. you only have so many spell slots per combat. Yes, you do get them back every short rest, but... The big, the big thing is you're only getting max amount of spells per combat. That's where it really comes into play where mm -hmm. warlocks get a little awkward and they just end up falling back and they just Eldritch Blast, which yeah. is, you know, you're playing warlock to put Eldritch Blast and the spells yes. are, just, are just icing on top. It, it, your spells are your burst damage or your burst effects and you go right. back to basically playing like auto turret. Yeah, you're basically just a martial class that uses charisma instead of dex. Yeah, instead of using a range. Yeah, you're, 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 you're a ranger. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> you're a ranger with, 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 better, spe with, with better spells yeah. and less health. Yeah. Right. So they're just they're just their own 
the unique, beautiful butterfly uh, warlocks. It's in in, in all serious, you know, relative side tangent. If if and when they bring out another main class, I think it would be interesting to see another class that functions kind of like Warlock does. Sure. So it's maybe less of an oddball. Yeah, sure. For, even if it's not a caster, but one that really helps rely on short rest to help benefit itself, you know, kind of thing. I don't know how you do that exactly. Like a monk? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, kind of. <laughs> kind of. But anyway. That synergy said, synergy score. Synergy we want to say two and a half. Yep. And the biggest this, thing, there's not a single thing specifically written in here about playing with your invocations at all. Uh, aside from letting you re-roll stuff. So if your invocation lets you do an extra ability that, you know, is a save it forces a saving throw or something that lets you re-roll that. Right. That's about the only thing that's helping with your invocation, but there's no direct and, correlation. And that's the thing away. too, like I said earlier, is you're already dependent on short rest, and this is just making you even more dependent on short rest. Mm-hmm. Instead of giving you stuff to use outside of short rest, right. it's just doubling down on what already is, uh, sometimes can come in to be an issue as a warlock. Yeah. So that's why I kind of gave an extra little nick down on the... But the absolute surgery. shenanigans that can be had with this... <laughs> Just what, yeah. what? Just watch your DM yeah. do this to watch your DM go I like. Think if you had a party that was wild magic barbarian, wild magic sorcerer, this. GM warlock, and I don't know if there's really any of the other random roll table ones off the top of my head, but hold, hold, get, I mean, do, Spirit, that, Spirit's Bard has some random, a lot of randomness. Yeah, to it, it does maybe. Some You'd have just a completely random, super chaotic yes. kind of. Uh, party the, composition. the entire party is in the chaotic tree. Chaotic, <laughs> yes. good, chaotic, neutral. I mean. This could be chaotic evil the whole way. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. So, uh, yeah, definitely very interesting, weird... But you can't play a random dice roll in class lawful. Absolutely not. <laughs> if you Absolutely do, you're not playing not. the game correctly. <laughs> <laughs> By law, it's chaotic. But that's what it is, guys. Uh, let us know your thoughts on this one. This one's definitely one of the more uh, unique ones. There so we that. go. That's right. So, uh, yeah, let us know your thoughts on this one. Thanks again to our sponsors, as always, Hit Point Press. Make sure you always check out their stuff. Great stuff coming from them on the regular. And, of course, if you enjoyed the video, remember to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell notification so you know when our new videos are coming out. And, as always, thanks for watching.